Look, uh, and I want to thank uh, a good friend of mine, Michigan Governor <laughs> Gretchen Whitmer. You've got a backbone like a ramrod. You know, and of course, I know you've had an incredible role model in Merkisha Lance Bottoms. She's got a backbone like a ramrod. The vice president of the United States, yeah. Vice President Harris. How's she doing? You're almost two years in. How's she doing? She's doing great. She has a backbone like a ramrod. But the truth is, <laughs> she's the strongest person I know. She's a backbone like a ramrod. I see the world from where I grew up like many of you. I grew up in Scranton, as I said. My mom taught me. My mom had a backbone like a ramrod. <laughs> I'm Dave Rubin. This is the Rubin Report. It's uh, October 24th, 2022. We're live streaming on Rumble YouTube and Blaze TV. And I got to tell you, people, I've got a backbone like a ramrod, whatever the high hell that means. And so do you if you're watching this show. <laughs> what is going on here? What is going on? I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, we had a great weekend around here. I smoked a 12 pound brisket. I still smell like meat. That was, that's what's going on here. I got a backbone like a ramrod. <laughs> I smell like smoked brisket, and we're going to talk about politics. Because the question is, as we now are getting very, very close, like I'm crying, I'm laughing so much. Uh, the question is, as we're getting close to this election, will the Democrat policy work? Will the policy of crashing the economy, getting us to war, and chopping off everyone's penises work? It's a, you know, they focus group this, they thought it was going to work. And the question is, will it work? That's what we're going to be tackling today, uh, but for real, like joking aside for a second, I mean, the Democrats are in a lot of trouble. Like there's a lot of good news. If you are sane, if you like America, if you like freedom and the constitution and you remember something that was better than this lunacy we're in right now, well, then there is a lot of good news. If you're a Democrat, there isn't good news. Uh, that being said, with about 10 days left or whatever it is, uh, you know, they could go hot with Ukraine, COVID-9, you guys know all the uh, all the nonsense but the democrats really are in a lot of trouble and the question will be how will they recalibrate over these 10 days to scare people and everything else so that's what we're talking about today and man i had a backbone like a ramrod wasn't that one of jordan peterson's 12 rules stand up straight and get a backbone like a ramrod something like that uh, all right, before we get to it, let's talk about Patriot Mobile. Uh, you know, I recently did a show on woke corporations and their origins. Uh, thankfully, conservatives are creating a parallel economy that is thriving, and I want to tell you about a new sponsor that's making a real difference. Patriot Mobile has exploded over the last year. They're proud conservatives offering a real alternative for people tired of funding major cell phone carriers who've all gone woke left. Patriot Mobile is a force for conservative values. This is because they take a portion of your bill and they fund conservative causes and candidates, people who believe in the sanctity of life, freedom of speech, the Second Amendment, and they're winning. In fact, their PAC, Patriot Mobile Action, flipped 11 school board races across Texas recently. Patriot Mobile has affordable plans for you, your family, and even your business. They offer the same nationwide coverage as the major carriers because they use multiple major networks, so you get the same great service minus the leftist propaganda. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Ruben or call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation when you use the special offer code Ruben. Special discounts are also available for veterans and first responders. Make the switch today and a difference tomorrow. Patriotmobile.com slash Ruben. That's patriotmobile.com slash Ruben or call 972 -PATRIOT. Patriot. And now back to me. All right. Ramrod. Here we go. Uh, all right. So look, everybody realizes this thing is looking like a bloodbath for the Democrats and it should. That is the key to all of this. Uh, what is happening right now is what should happen. It is how we are going to reverse this. And as I said the other day, we will be able to look in the rear view mirror and go AOC you later. We will put this wokeness behind us, this endless insanity behind us. We can do it. Uh, but as we get closer to that, like as you get closer to the finish line, it's going to get crazier. Uh, so... This, uh, this first video that we're going to show you, this is Jake Tapper over at CNN. As you guys know, Jake is, he's a Democrat activist in essence, right? If you asked him wh what he really is, uh, if he was, you know, on a lie detector test, he would have to say he's a Democrat. It's obvious. He's run cover for Democrats for a long time. But, and, and by the way, he's not even close to the worst 
at CNN. You know, he's thought of as the moderate at CNN. Uh, anyway, uh, he had old socialist and sort of irrelevant voice, Bernie Sanders, that one kind of petered out quick, on the show over the weekend uh, to discuss why it is that things are looking so bad under Democrat control. And Bernie's response is quite curious. To play devil's advocate here, if I'm a, a swing voter out there, a young voter, a, a working class voter, I, and I hear your message, I think, but you guys control everything. Democrats control the House and the Senate and the White House, and inflation is really high, and I'm having a deaf, tough time making ends meet. Why should I vote for you again? Well, we have half the votes, exactly half the votes in the Senate and a little tiny majority uh, in the House. And I think it's important that when we talk about inflation, Republicans will say, well, this is Joe Biden's fault. Really? Our inflation rate is much too high. It is 8%. It is 10% in the UK, 10% throughout Europe, 7% in Canada. Inflation is a global problem caused, A, by the breaking of supply chains because of the pandemic, by the war in Ukraine, and as I said, significant part of inflation has to do with corporate greed. Oh yeah, you knew he was gonna throw that in at the end. It's the corporations, guys. It's the people that are producing things. It's their fault. They've just decided they're not in the mood to produce as much stuff for you. They're the ones. It's like, you know, West Elm and CB2 and Best Buy. They're really behind why you, it takes so long to get a couch and a TV. They just decided they didn't want you to get that 75-inch flat screen and that cushy new couch and the rest of it. Uh, no. No, that's actually not right. Uh, Bernie, also, he completely obfuscated the beginning of this. Yes, it is true. The Democrats are in control of everything. He says the Senate has a tie. Yes, but they have the vice president who is the tiebreaker. So the Senate is to the Democrats. That's number one. Number two, uh, he then says, well, we have a slim majority in the House. Well, all right, a slim majority can still operate the same way a big majority can. Uh, and, uh, and then he compares us to a whole bunch of other countries, uh, which is interesting, saying that they're worse than us, but he's usually telling us how great those countries are and how bad America is. So this is a very, very bizarre thing. And then, of course, blaming uh, corporations. The reason I even played that clip is because it's interesting how irrelevant Bernie feels now, right? And that was always how it was going to end with Bernie. Bernie was always going to end as the old, irrelevant white millionaire socialist who was just going to be yammering on and looking crazier and crazier as he doesn't get haircuts. And, and that would be the end of Bernie Sanders. So I think we're almost at the end of Bernie Sanders. His legacy, well, that he, he is the one who ushered in a lot of this socialist nonsense. So I guess he can put that on a little, little plaque when he retires in one of his three houses. But the point there is no one's buying this nonsense. No one's blaming the corporations for inflation. Inflation has to do with, say, the Inflation Reduction Act and the endless printing of money and giving all the money to Ukraine and all of those things. No one's buying the Democrat line on this. And it's coming out in the polls and even the corporate propagandists over at MSNBC, they can't hide it, MSNBC and NBC. Uh, here's Chuck Todd with some new polling data. Digging deeper here, we've got some all-time midterm highs that should serve as red flags for the Democrats. The wrong track, 71% all-time midterm high since we've been polling. How about presidential approved disapproval on the economy sitting at 57%? Again, we hadn't recorded that uh, ever that high in our poll. And the third one, the direction of the economy. In the next year, is it going to get better or worse? 50% say it's going to get worse. Again, an all-time high in midterm polling. Okay, so I want to focus on the first number he read out there, which was 71% polled say we're on the, the wrong track. Now, you guys, again, you know my feelings about polls, and I think this often bears out after elections. They end up being wildly off, or they'll tell you this person, this group of people were misrepresented, or a certain amount of these people don't uh, pick up their phones or whatever it might be. So you have to take some of this with a grain of salt, but the, the trends are getting so out of control now and they're becoming, and the gaps are so obvious that there really is something going on here. Might I also recommend, you know, just talk to your friends and family. Are, are people, even, even left-leaning people, even Democrats, are they going, boy, things aren't really going well right now. It feels like Biden's on the ball and we're safe and they're, we're not going to nuclear war and Armageddon and, you know, all of the stuff. So if you don't, want to just trust polls, go to that. But the number that I want to focus on is that 71% say we're on the wrong track. That strikes me as a really, really crazy number. We were told that Joe Biden got 81 million votes 
old Joe Biden, who didn't do any rallies, who you couldn't find anyone that really supported him except the media loved him and, you know, sort of big tech loved him and they had to take out Orange Man. 81 million people voted for this guy and now 71% of people polled are saying the country's going in the wrong direction. That, that, the bottom is falling out. I think that is the phrase one might use on that. This guy is in a lot of trouble and everyone sees it. He is the sacrificial lamb and they will take him out one way or another. After the midterms, that is obvious. He's dead man walking. I don't know if he can see it or not because he's so muddled. We'll get, uh, we'll get to more on that in just a minute. Uh, but the Democrats are in a lot of trouble and the numbers bear it out, right? The numbers absolutely bear it out. On CBS's Face the Nation this weekend, they talked to Chicago Democrat voters and uh, they discuss, well, what's going on with the Democrats? Because, you know, <laughs> Chicago, we'll find out how many people got sh shot in Chicago this weekend. Can we do that while we throw to this clip? Uh, so here is video of, this is just a random woman. They went to find Democrats in Chicago. Her name is LaShawn. Uh, and uh, she's not happy with Democrats in Chicago. LaShawn, I'd like to get you to weigh in on this. I can also agree with some of his points. Um, I really would say sex education. I feel like... Um, some things, you know, are brought to the children's attention they wouldn't even think about. And you have eight kids. I imagine you have some pretty specific ideas in your mind when you're speaking yes, about this. Yes. Mm -hmm. But children are, you yeah, know, they're really influenced. You can teach them one thing at home, but when they go to school, they're just as much influenced by their teachers and their surroundings. And we should have more input, the parents, of what we would want them to learn. Now, isn't that fascinating? Isn't that fascinating? Just wait till Daily Beast or HuffPo or Media Matters or somebody tries to do a hit piece on LaShawn, a mother of eight in Chicago who's upset that they're teaching all this gender craziness to her kids, right? She's, by any estimation, I would guess this woman is basically a lefty, a Democrat, right? She lives in a big city in Chicago. Uh, she just doesn't want her kids being infected with this stuff at the public school level. Uh, but that is not what the Democrats want people saying, right? So now she's going to have to be a bad person. That is how it works. Uh, we did a little research while we were throwing a bat clip. What'd you tell me? 54 shot, 55, sorry. 55 people were shot in Chicago this weekend. 11 were killed in Chicago this weekend. Chicago, Illinois, which has one of the strongest uh, gun laws in the country. I mean, that is absolutely insane. There will be no protests. There will be no riots. You won't find out any of their names because basically all 55 people shot were black. All 11 people killed were black and the shooters were black. Thus, the media doesn't know what to do with this. If you want a little more context on the numbers, 448 shot and killed from January 1st, 2022 to September 1st, 2022. Okay. So that's in nine months. Uh, which, of course, is a record. Uh, let's continue, though, because what else are the Democrats uh, running on? Well, they're running on this radical policy on abortion, right? They could say, they could try to be moderate on something. They could say, hey, we really want to protect a woman's right. We don't want, you know, the government making decisions. How about three months? That used to be the decent Democrat position. It is now the Republican position, right? 15 weeks here in Florida. That is the moderate position. Here's Amy Klobuchar uh, from Minnesota, as you know, and she was on uh, The View discussing polling data related to abortion. I've seen these polls go every which way, but what I do know is we've got the turnout, we've got people that want to protect their freedom to vote, freedom to have our democracy, freedom to be able to make your own reproductive health care decisions without having Ted Cruz sitting in the waiting room, okay? Yeah. Oh God, it's so boring. It's so boring and, and not thoughtful and weak. Uh, first off, lady, ease up. Why do all the Democrats end up looking crazy? They all end up, they get crazy with the facelifts and the Botox and the Restylane or whatever they're doing. But she's, what did she do to her eyes? What did she do to her eyes? She looks nuts. Okay, so yes, Ted Cruz does not want to be in the waiting room. It's just a, it's just a silly, nonsensical joke. Um, but what's interesting about this is I, when, when this whole thing happened with the, the reversal 
of Roe v. Wade and the, the uh, papers that were leaked, right? The Supreme Court decision that was leaked early. And by the way, we never found out who did that. Does that seem a little odd that we just completely moved past that? A massive, extraordinary assault, a data breach on one of the branches of government. We just never figured it out. But okay, putting that aside, everyone kept saying, oh, if they reverse Roe v. Wade and just kick it back to the states. Again, abortion is not legal. You guys know that. Not illegal. It is up to the states now, which is exactly how it was before 1972, I think it was. Um, the whole idea was, hey, this is going to help the Democrats because you're going to enrage women to the point that we'll see it in the polls and women will come out and blah, blah, blah. And it's actually the reverse. Believe it or not, it is the reverse. And there is a lot of polling data on that. So real clear politics uh, has been, poll they, they've been polling forever, basically. Uh, but they are now showing that uh, the, the largest lead for Republicans uh, is right now. It's the biggest lead that they've had since before the Dobbs versus Jackson decision. I think we've got some info for you here. So this is the Senate battle. This is real clear politics, the Senate battle. They think that in about two weeks from now, once we get the results of the election, that the Senate will flip that 50-50 situation that we're in with the tiebreaker to the Dems, it will flip and it will go red. Now, look, some of these are not totally for sure, right? We don't know what's going to happen with Herschel Walker in, uh, in, in well, we don't know what's going to happen with Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania. We don't know what's going to happen with Herschel Walker in Georgia, Blake Masters in Arizona. So some of these are, you know, these are all not perfect. This is everyone, you know, playing that prediction game, but real clear politics, which has a pretty solid track record. Uh, they're now saying 53 for the Republicans, 47 for the Democrats. And they're talking about some of the trends that uh, they're, they're not just pulling this out of thin air, that Blake Masters and Dr. Oz and Herschel Walker are now tightening their races. And you want to tighten right before election day, obviously. So they think that all of those seats will be flipped. Uh, they also think that Adam Laxalt of Nevada is uh, going to get the, the seat over there and that he will flip that, which will be interesting. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Adam Laxalt, he was, wasn't he Governor DeSantis's college roommate? I think he was Governor DeSantis's college roommate. I, I met him at an event a couple weeks ago. Seemed like a really nice guy. Uh, obviously, I'm not, I'm not perfectly versed in everything that's going on in Nevada, but struck me as a decent guy. And if DeSantis likes him, that's pretty much good enough for me. Uh, a little more from Real Clear Politics here. Uh, so what they predict will happen is at the end of this, there will be basically... 175 Democrat seats, 225 Republican seats, and then there's these 35 toss-ups. So that's that's really where the meat of this and, and what the end of it will look like. Uh, Real Clear Politics projects that the GOP is going to pick up 12 to 47 seats and roughly 29 is sort of where they think things are going to be at. Uh, and then we've got a little bit more on the governor's side of things. Uh, they are predicting that by the end of election night or the two or three days after that, because <laughs> that's how it works these days, uh, they expect 31 Republican governors uh, and 19 Democrat governors, which is a net plus three for the Republicans. And the ones that are interesting on there, if you're looking at the map right now, can we go back to the map for a second? Uh, the ones that are interesting on the map right there, uh, Nevada, Wisconsin, and Michigan. So Whitmer, they're saying goodbye, Gretchen Whitmer. And I'll even toss in one more. I, I really believe it. Maybe I am a dreamer and sometimes I'm going to get things wrong, people, right? Like I thought Larry Elder had a chance in corrupt California. I got that one wrong, obviously. But I'm telling you, there is, I'm talking to a lot of people in New York right now. There is something going on in New York. You got to remember, nobody voted for Kathy Hochul, right? She was installed after they got rid of Andrew Cuomo. She has been horrible on lockdowns, horrible on the economy. She has told people in New York to leave if they don't share her values and come to Florida. Plenty of them are. Um, she, New York City is an absolute disaster. I honestly think New York could flip. Mark my words, and maybe I'll be wrong, and then they can clip this and make fun of me, but I really think it's possible. But, but Michigan getting rid of Gretchen Whitmer, who didn't want people to plant their gardens during COVID and New York flipping, man, that would be something. Uh, of course, they do think that Carrie Lake will win in Arizona, and she's been absolutely on fire. DeSantis, of course, is going to crush it here in Florida. And speaking of that, I am going tonight after the show today. I got to hop in the car, a couple hour drive. I'm heading up to the one gubernatorial debate that they have here in Florida, which will be Governor DeSantis versus this, this empty suit. He's this empty suit of a fake tan, the worst kind of politician, flip flops on everything, has no beliefs, wanted lockdowns, awful human being, used to be pro-life. Now he wants eight month abortions, Charlie Crist. 
Uh, so I'm going to that thing tonight. So I'll see if I can get some video. Maybe I can snag the governor for a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, it continues because now the press, as they're realizing that they can kind of turn on Biden a little bit more because the whole thing's falling apart. So they need that sacrificial lamb, as I've said. Uh, they're starting to ask him some more questions about uh, polling. And uh, here's Joe's answer to one of those such questions. Do you think states should have a right to ban gender? Wait, poll after poll shows that the uh, American, yep. the American people trust Republicans on the economy and think that Republicans should control Congress. How do you, how well, do you first break of through all, that? I'm not sure about the polls because, you know, the way people conduct polls today, it's hard. Ninety percent of it is you get on a telephone where you have to call seven times to get somebody to, to answer the phone. All right, I'll give you something there. I wanted to show you that one because uh, Joe doesn't really believe in polls. They, they believe in polls when they work for them. They don't believe in polls when they don't work for them. Uh, that interview continued. It was, it was an absolute train wreck. Uh, and Joe Biden was asked about his age, which the implication really was his, his cognitive abilities. I think people should look and say, is he, does he still have the same passion for what he's doing. And if they think I do and I can do it, then that's fine. If they don't, then they should vote against me. Not against me, should encourage me not to go. But that's not how I feel. I can't even say the age I'm gonna be. I can't even get it out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, it's so, he's so creepy. He usually just touches young girls and sniffs their hair. There he was moving on that guy and touching him. You could see the way he backs up. Like, why is this old weirdo grabbing me. He also muddles through the sentence. I mean, he cannot say one complete coherent sentence. I don't mean to be a dick, but that's a problem. That is a bit of a problem. So why are the Democrats losing? Well, we wanted to talk to you today about the slippery slope fallacy. Uh, let's put that slippery slope up there. Uh, this is what the slippery slope is. There's basically a period of time, and we've been in it now for a couple years, where there's a bunch of people screaming about things and they're saying, hey, there's this baker and he doesn't want to be forced to bake a cake and people call him a bigot. And then they say, hey, uh, we'd like to chop your son's genitals off. And they say, stop that, you transphobe. There's this period where everyone who is fighting insanity is treated as if they're overreacting, they're a bigot and a homophobe and everything else. And then eventually, uh, as I said earlier, the bottom falls out on these things. You end up with this crash of reality. Uh, and that's sort of where I think we are headed right now. So you get this period of, as you can see up top there, you're overreacting. And then eventually, perhaps in a midterm election, you get, so what if teachers want to have sex and gender conversations with children in kindergarten without their parents' knowledge? If you oppose it, you're intolerant. So this is sort of where we're at, I would say, politically right now. And there are many, many examples of it. So now we are going to show you some video from yesterday. And this interview that Joe Biden did is with a biological male named Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, Dylan Mulvaney, born a man, I suppose transitioned to female at some point within the last year or so. It sounds like a couple hundred days since Dylan uh, became a woman. Okay. I don't want to get booted off YouTube today. We are on a nice little run here, but if we do rumble.com slash Ruben reports so they're going to be watching out for all my language here. Uh, but Dylan is a biological man. Joe Biden sat down with Dylan who Dylan is now dressing like a woman living as a woman or something like that. Um, and, uh, Dylan asked, and, and I don't even know if Dylan has had all the surgery, like Dylan might have a wang. I'm not sure. What has happened? What has happened to America? Um, anyway, here's Dylan asking Joe Biden if it's wrong for states to ban gender surgeries. Do you think states should have a right to ban gender affirming health care? I don't think any state or anybody should have the right to do that as a moral question and as a legal question. I just think it's wrong. Okay, it's, it's an incredible response by Joe Biden. Now, first off, I just wanna say, as a general rule, Joe Biden has been the perfect presidency for this woke idiocy because he has no idea what he's doing. He will read whatever they tell him to read, usually very poorly, and he stands for nothing, right? Like, so it's just a matter of push this old buffoon out there, make sure that he doesn't have a full mental breakdown in front of everybody, and then he'll just say whatever we want him to say. 
So when she's, can, can we play the clip one more time? Can we play that one more time? Really listen to the question and listen to the answer. So the question is, do the states have a right to do this? Do you think states should have a right to ban gender affirming health care? I don't think any state or anybody should have the right to do that. As a moral question and as a legal question. I just think it's wrong. Okay, well, just because you think something, Joe Biden, even though you're the president of the United States, doesn't make it right. The states do have a right. We have states' rights. We have federalism. The states are allowed to make laws. And as for your morality, I don't know where your morality comes from. You often talk about your, your Catholic faith as you're pushing now for radical eight-month abortions. So whether you're talking legally or morally, Joe, you, you actually have no handle on what you're saying. Now, again, that person that Joe was being asked a question by is a trans woman named Dylan Mulvaney, uh, who just recently transitioned. There is a ton of video of Dylan uh, on the interweb. Uh, here's a video of Dylan the day before, or two days before, announcing his or her visit to the White House. It's day 222 of being a girl. I'm in Washington, D.C., and I'm going to the White House to speak to the President of the United States. Oh. I get to sit down with Joe Biden and now this news, and I get to ask him a few questions surrounding trans issues in the United States. Y'all are obviously wondering what I'm going to wear to meet the President. Here you go. It's the trans flag colors. Cute, right? Do you think I just knock on the front door? Let's go. I'm not going to lie. I have been... I've been having a rough go of it lately, a lot of darkness. And and today was what I needed to keep going. Um, also, if you live in the US and can legally vote, this is gonna be one of the most important elections of our lifetimes. Okay, so apparently Dylan was very depressed and then this call came just in time. It's almost as if some of this stuff comes with some, some mental health stuff and that perhaps changing your exterior doesn't uh, solve all of your interior problems, but let's just put that aside for a moment. I was thinking as I was watching this, uh, he or she says that this is day 222 of being a girl. I mean, that, that's just not reality. That's just not real. Um, and at some point we just have to clearly state, we cannot play along with your delusions. Like we can't, I believe that any adult can live as they see fit. But what I was thinking really when I was watching that was if you were a young female journalist, Let's say you were a 23 year old female journalist who went to school, studied real hard. You've, you interned maybe at a newspaper, you started your own uh, operation, whatever it might be. And then you wanna interview the president about some serious issues. And then you're upstaged by the dude who may or may not have a penis dressed as a woman uh, who is now at the White House. I am not saying, this is not transphobia. I don't have an irrational fear of trans people. I do have, I would say, a rational fear of made up nonsense because I believe that I live in the real world as do most of you. And these people are just dragging us into this insanity and then you get answers from the president of the United States that are, are even worse than the, the question itself, right? Joe Biden's answer to that was absolutely insane. Um, here's a little bit more. This is a couple of weeks ago, uh, Dylan Mulvaney. Now, what you just saw was day 222. So I think this is day, this is day 100 something. A little more from Dylan Mulvaney. Six, being a girl, and today I'm in nature. Trees, I love them. Water, lakes, I love them. Heels, they're my hiking heels. I love them. Okay, come on. Ah, ah, ah. Bridges, love them. Coconut water, love it. Not an ad, just love it. Wind turbine, love it. <laughs> Meadows, love them. I'm scared of getting Lyme disease. Love ya. Ah! Oh. Did you see that? I gotta get out of here. I don't really know what's going on here. All I know is that person just interviewed the president at the White House. Is that person just a troll? Like, is any of this real? I've seen those videos. In, over the last couple of weeks, this person's been popping up. You know, suddenly they just, the, the algorithms just push people to you because we're all being manipulated in crazy ways. So I've seen these videos before and I thought they were a joke. Like I was like, this cannot possibly be real. So I do think it's possible that Dylan 
uh, is just a troll, but some, whether, whether Dylan is either mentally ill or a troll, either way, he or she got to the White House and got to ask Joe Biden that question. And Joe Biden said that as a moral and legal matter, uh, no one should be able to stop people from transitioning, stop young people in essence from transitioning. That's really what this is all about. Uh, but the, the woke nonsense, let's get back to that slippery slope thing, right? It's a dumb PR move by Biden. Who, who is in charge that, that two weeks from the election thought, okay, whether Dylan Mulvaney is actually trans or not, or whether she or he is a troll or not or whatever, that that would be the thing that Joe Biden should be doing. Joe Biden should be sitting down with her or him talking about these things as opposed to any of the issues that we really care about. I mean, it's just so incredible. It's actually, actually completely incredible. Um, but uh, you do know that Joe Biden does want the government to be able to tax the hell out of you to make sure that his political agenda is taken care of. He even says it himself. Do you support a federal fund for individuals like myself who need to take time off work, obtain child absolutely. care? The answer is absolutely. But absolutely. guess what? We need the same votes we need to overrule Don, to uh, reinstate uh, the, uh, the decision that was struck down by the court. I mean, I do support that. And I've urged, publicly urged companies to do that. I've urged them publicly as president of the United States saying, this is what you should be doing. I urge you to do it. Sorry, Joe, companies have free speech and free association. And just because you urge companies to do what, what you want with their money and treat their employees as you wish, uh, that's not how it works. There is a word, Connor, can you help me with this one? Or maybe Phoenix, you could chime in on this one. There's a word, it starts with an F that people say a lot. It's slipping my mind at the moment. When governments and private corporations work together to oppress the people for political purpose, fascism, fascism, right? Thank you. Um, that, so it's like, who are the fascists? They're calling us fascists. He's telling you this. And by the way, when he's telling you, hey, I would like to pressure corporations to do what I wish related to healthcare, how, what healthcare policies they have, healthcare, if you want to call abortion healthcare, um, you should take him at his word that he would love to pressure companies to do that because this is the same old windbag who was pushing for companies to fire employees when they didn't want to be injected with the experimental vaccination that basically does not work, right? So you should be a little concerned about this, uh, this combination of state and corporate power, because again, fascism bad. Not the way they use the word, but the way it, the word really is designed. Uh, here's Biden being very confused about what's going on with guns. My, my, my legislation says there can be no more than eight bullets in a round, okay? No more than eight bullets in a round. I'm actually not a gun expert, although we did go shooting in Homestead a couple of weeks ago. Um, a bullet is a round. You have a magazine or a clip that has many of them, but ah, you got it, all right. He just doesn't know what he's saying. He doesn't know what he's saying. Uh, here he is completely making up something that did not happen related to student loan debt. Secondly, if you don't have one of those loans, you just get 10,000 written off. It's passed. I got it passed by a vote or two. Yeah, never meant to vote. It was never voted on, so he just completely made that up. Uh, but let's move on from old Joe Biden. There must be other some. There must be some sane Democrats out there to counter this, right? I mean, my God, for God's sakes! Uh, here's Nancy Pelosi. But on things like sending, you know, those fourteen hundred dollar checks, putting yeah. cash out there. That's right. I mean, didn't that end up contributing to inflation? Do you have any regrets about? the bills you passed and how you structured them? No, absolutely not, because this that was necessary uh, for people to survive. Our purpose it was, though, is, was that it was inflationary. The, the, but, no, but the point is, is that when you reduce unemployment, it's inflationary. That is a fact. All right, first off, she's starting to look like Michael Jackson in the later years. That's just the thing. I don't again, I don't know why all the Democrats start looking so insane. I don't know why. My theory on it would be something like this. You know, Jordan Peterson often talks about how when you're lying all the time, your face actually starts to show it. The misery, you can see it on people. There's a certain misery. You can see sort of the, the, what the end result of the endless dishonesty is. And I think these people are so dishonest. They're so, it's, it's just such evil within them at this point that the facelifts and everything else is, is to combat that. But then it just, it's, it's sort of the physiology versus the, bleh, the chemicals and I don't know what's going on. Anyway, she looks like Michael Jackson. Um, yes, lady, 
if you give all these people $1,400 and you're not giving it to them because it's their money in the first place and you keep spending all this money so money has less value than the money that you're giving back to the people who you stole it from isn't going to really help the economy or help the people. But this is what they do. They pretend they're nice while you're voting for them to control you. Please govern me harder, please. I vote for you to take my money and then give it back to me and smack me on the butt and send me on my way. But man, this is all good. You should be feeling good about today's show because the point is no one is buying this nonsense. Nobody is buying this nonsense. And again, the polls are bearing it out. But suddenly, as I showed you before, Joe Biden doesn't believe in polls. And I don't think Nancy Pelosi believes in polls. Uh, and here's a little more with uh, Pelosi on what's going on with inflation. And the fact is, is that uh, when I hear people talk about inflation, as I heard him there, we have to change that subject. Inflation is a global phenomena, phenomenon. Yes. The EU, the European Union, the UK, the British have higher inflation rate than we do here. It's not the fight is not about inflation. It's about the cost of living. Oh, it's not about inflation. It's just about the cost of living. Nothing they say has any meaning. It doesn't mean anything. Guess what? When inflation is high, the cost of living goes up, right? When inflation is high and your money is less valuable, then you have to spend more money to get the same things, whether it's your rent or to buy a car or to buy some chicken thighs. Like that is how it works. But I like that at the, at least at the beginning, she was somewhat honest. Like we got to change the topic. <laughs> They're talking about inflation. Could, we, could somebody talk about my eyebrows? You see what I just did here? I mean, this is serious stuff. Uh, but again, she just simply does not believe that people don't like Democrat policies and that it's coming out in the polling. Why, why don't the American people, according to the surveys, trust Democrats, but instead trust Republicans? Well, let me just say one of the, you talked about uh, uh, what you perceive to be a change in momentum. Let me just tell you what I have seen over this past month. I don't subscribe to what you said, that they don't trust us. Let me just say, I don't, uh, my face is falling off. I looked at the commercial. I mean, Jesus Christ. So, okay, so they don't believe in the polls. Well, keep not believing in the polls, lady. Keep going. I mean, I really want you guys to keep going with it. You know, like, keep going with all your bad politics. Keep going, chopping off genitals, no states' rights, high taxes, crashing the economy, war in Ukraine. Keep going, keep going. And we're going to show you uh, in about two weeks where, where we're all at with the rest of this, but what do they need? As I always tell you, because we've got about 10 days left. What do they need to maintain power? They need fear and they must spread fear more than Megatron, Skeletor and Cobra Commander combined because what will happen if the Republicans take over? That game, destruction of the economy. The Republican leadership in Congress has made it clear. They will crash the economy next year by threatening the full faith and credit of the United States for the first time in our history, putting the United States in default unless, unless we yield to their demand to cut Social Security and Medicare. Okay. First off, they do this every, this is what they do every two years. Republicans are cutting Social Security and Medicare. This is, they do this is like the number one fear tactic because they know that older people who, older people who vote, because older people do vote in higher numbers, they start freaking out about it. It never ends up happening, that the Republicans will crash the economy. Uh, Dems, you don't need the Republicans because you're doing it pretty well on yourselves. Remember, you are in charge right now and the economy is crashing. The idea that maybe the Republicans who are not very good at any of this either, but as I always say, you don't have to be a Republican, but you cannot be a Democrat. But it's not like the Republicans are so great. But imagine if, imagine if in two weeks the House flips, right? So then we have everyone sworn in a little bit after that. And imagine the House flips, the Senate flips, and there's like a cultural flip. Like everyone is like, oh, the woke stuff no more, the endless spending no more, the war no more. Like imagine if we actually flipped it. Do you think the economy would crash? I actually think that the evil corporations that Bernie Sanders was talking about earlier, the corporations might start uh, figuring out ways to do business properly again. I think that NASDAQ and the S&P, all these things, 
business might start flourishing again. People would not be afraid that a bunch of backwards woke buffoons were running the economy. And then there would be confidence again. What you need in a country that's doing things well is confidence. You need a ramrod to stand up straight and get out there and feel good. So when you feel good, other people feel good. You start exchanging goods and services again. And voila, you got a chugging economy. Uh, here is Kamala Harris. She's a liar when it comes to just about everything, although in her defense, she doesn't know what she's saying either. Uh, here she is saying, and this is a complete lie, and we've got the evidence, uh, that she had nothing to do with the Minnesota Freedom Fund during the BLM riots. This was the group that was uh, paying for people to get out of jail. They were paying the bail on people who were burning down buildings, breaking uh, into stores, general chaos, et cetera, et cetera. I want to ask you, uh, the Minnesota GOP is holding a press conference this afternoon to criticize you for your support a couple of years ago before you were the vice president for something called the Minnesota Freedom Fund that was really set up to help those who are arrested after the, in the aftermath of the George Floyd riots, help them get out. It's since been sort of morphed into something else and has been used to help people get out who've been accused of, of many other crimes. Do you have any thoughts about this? I think that unfortunately what we're seeing are, is people are, are playing political games right now. We're 18 days away from midterms and um, we have sadly not seen a lack of misinformation and disinformation. Uh, and, and I think this is another one of those examples. Political games, misinformation. Surely we can't find a tweet of Kamala Harris supporting the Minnesota Freedom Fund. We don't have that, what, what? hot diggity dog. If you're able to chip in now to the Minnesota Freedom Fund to help post bail for those protesting on the ground in Minnesota. Yes, it's right there, lady. Reality is misinformation if you are a chronic liar, and that's what she is. Oh, and uh, as long as we're in Minnesota, here's Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison. He's a bad dude. Uh, he doesn't know anybody that wants to defund the police. And then I don't know anybody who thinks that we should defund the police. Oh, really, Keith? Because here you are with two ladies. Yep, there you are. Uh, Keith Ellison, two days ago with Corey Bush. You know, we've played the videos of her defund the police and Ilhan Omar, uh, who wants to dismantle the police, uh, two of the leading voices in the defund the police movement. So everything they say is a lie. They have gone so all in on lies. Two plus two does not equal four. Having male genitalia doesn't make you a dude. The rest of it. Everything they say is a lie, so they must keep lying. But what else can they do? They have to keep scaring the hell out of you, right? So now, do we have the the warning? We have the warning because we're going to show Joy Reid. I think we got the warning. Yeah, here's Joy Reid on the televised mental institution known as MSNBC. Florida's Jim Crow Redux governor, Ron DeSantis, even has his own Office of Election Crimes. Newly released and frankly disturbing video shows Tampa police back in August arresting people on charges of illegal voting in the 2020 election. That is because Ron DeSantis and his Republican cronies in the state legislature have done everything in their power to reverse the clock back to the 19th century. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's fiction. It's a fictitious network. Everything they say is fiction. By the way, you know, we're in a day of an age of cultural appropriation, aren't we? She has blonde hair. Generally speaking, uh, as far as I know, black people tend not to have blonde hair. It's just, that's just a thing. It's just a thing. So she's appropriating the shit out of Suzanne Summers, and I don't like it. You guys get the Suzanne Summers reference? Come on, tell me that worked for you. You got it? Three's company, man. Suzanne Summers. No? Oh, youth is wasted on the young. That's messed up. Uh, anyway, she's, she's just ridiculous. Everyone can vote here in Florida. You do have to have an ID to vote. You can get an ID very easily. And the idea that there's an office, th there is an office. They do have an office to make sure that people who are voting are supposed to vote and people who aren't supposed to vote don't vote. There is an office for that here, Joy, okay? Yeah, just like in the Jim Crow South, ridiculous. And that, and that he doesn't want black people to vote. I know several black people who are voting for Ron DeSantis. But if you want to see how stupid everything is, this, this might be the most, ins I, everything's the most insane thing, so I don't want to be too hyperbolic. Here is a uh, tweet by a quote-unquote journalist. His name is Alec McGill, and he uh, was quoting a Financial Times article. This might be, look at this, this is so bananas. So they just want to get DeSantis, right? According to a friend, DeSantis would tell dates that he liked Thai food, 
but pronounced it thigh. If they corrected him, Finch wrote, he would find an excuse to leave. He didn't want a girlfriend who corrected him, according to quote unquote journalist Joshua Chafin. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know what? I'm going to the debate tonight. And I, if I get a moment with Ron DeSantis, first off, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring some pad thai. I'm gonna bring some chicken pad thai and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna smash it in his face because he's a racist. It's so stupid. Uh, I'm being told right now, live on the fly, that that guy just deleted that tweet right before our show started. However, the quote is in the article. Financial Times felt it was important to go back 20 years, 25 years ago, roughly, to Ron DeSantis's college life to find out how he pronounced the word tie. Right, righto. Let's continue with journalism. Uh, here's a guy that works at CNN. He's a journalist named Ryan Strzok. Uh, and he tweeted out an incredible resource. And this is by another guy, this Dale guy, D Dale 8. He's another quote unquote journalist. Uh, an incredible resource from Dale on election deniers. At least 22 of 36 Republican candidates from governor are election deniers. At least 19 of 35 Republican candidates for U.S. Senate are election deniers. And at least 11 of 27 Republican candidates for Secretary of State are election deniers. Oddly, uh, as far as I know, he didn't uh, check any of the Democrats on that because Hillary Clinton, election denier. Stacey Abrams, election denier. The list goes on and on. Election denier, illegitimate president, uh, Russia hoax, et cetera, et cetera. But this is what they got. It's all that's left because after you chop off everybody's genitals, all you got left is election denial. Uh, but this is it. This, this is what they're campaigning on. And the mainstream media is trying to perhaps catch up a little bit. This is one of the things I'm always fascinated with. When the people who get everything wrong or ignore the stories, then reality just kind of keeps on coming, right? So they miss all of the stuff when it happens. And then reality keeps coming. And then they flip right in front of your eyes. And you're like, oh, they're not so bad. But you must remember that they are. Here is a video of Jake Tapper. Again, he's a, he's a Democrat. That's okay, Jake. You should just say it. He's a Democrat. And he's shocked that we're not having a national conversation about the damage done to kids from closing schools. But I'm going to just give you the lead right now. Uh, we've all been having that conversation. What he means is he's not having the conversation. Videotape. I have to say, I'm surprised that there hasn't been a national conversation about the damage done to kids because of these school closures and the virtual learning and everything. Because, I mean, I'm not saying it, there should be a national do-over, but we can't just pretend that fifth graders who are now seventh graders, that that didn't happen. You know, and like, I feel like there should be, and not, not with a blame game. Look, it happened. People did it. It was criticized, the school closures, the virtual learning, et cetera. But here we are. Um, yeah. There needs to be yeah, like, a, I mean, like a bipartisan movement, you know? Jake is shocked. Jake is shocked that there wasn't a national conversation about this. Well, Jake, we were all talking about it. Everyone online that is doing your job better than you with way less resources uh, was doing this. We were all talking about how kids should be at school, how masks don't work, how forcing jabs doesn't work, how this is going to cause all of these problems that we now know, whether it's delayed speech in young children or myocarditis in you know te young male teenagers. Like we were all talking about it. Where were you? So he's saying, well, we don't want to play the blame game, but dude, mirror, get one. Like, come on now, come on now. Uh, but what's interesting is, so now it's finally bubbling forward. And there he is. I mean, he has Jeb Bush on, like talk about completely irrelevant. You have a completely irrelevant guest who has no clout within either political party to come on and talk about how you didn't do your job properly, something like that. Uh, but people are seeing it. People really are seeing it. And do you know why that's good? Because crazy things can happen. I do not think it is completely off the table that Republican Lee Zeldin is gonna win in New York and uh, he's gaining a lot of momentum. The polls are basically showing them neck and neck. And again, it's worth repeating, nobody has voted for Kathy Hochul. She was installed. This woman has no support. She's got the Nancy Pelosi eyebrow thing, but that's all she's got. Here's a little bit from Lee Zeldin. 
Now, if Kathy Hochul had accepted your invite for a debate and she was sitting next to me, it would be a fair question to ask her, why do you think that New York is leading the entire nation in population loss? Now, she couldn't finish that sentence. I would say that the reason why New York leads the entire nation in population loss is because they're hitting their breaking point. Okay. And they feel like their wallet, their safety, their freedom, the quality of their kids' education are under attack, and they're looking at other states. So you have to look at the economic burden. And part of that, too, is bringing down energy costs, reversing the state's ban on the safe extraction of natural gas, approving new pipeline applications okay. that are up in Albany. As far as the business climate goes, stop picking winners and losers with these tax breaks. Uh, instead, level the playing field. Kathy Olchel has repeatedly referred to Lee Zeldin, who is a moderate Democrat. Like if you're looking at that guy or listening to that guy and you're like, he's an extremist, racist Republican, like the problem's on you. She has repeatedly referred to him as a MAGA extremist. She has also told on more than one occasion, half of the population, because, you know, states are basically 50-50, even if they vote 55-45, but, you know, most states are roughly 50-50. She told Republicans that live in her state to leave because they don't share her values. New York is at a breaking point. It might happen. Maybe people are sick of the high taxes. Maybe people are sick of the endless corruption. Maybe people are sick of being, you know, at the whim of a politician, whether you're going to get out of your house or not, or everything else. Like, it's really, it's really, it, it's, there's a chance. There's a chance. And so you're saying there's a chance, right? Like, that's, that's where we're at right now. Anyway, I showed you a lot of Democrats today. We didn't show you a lot on Republicans. I showed you a lot of Democrats. I thought I'd show you a Republican to end this thing uh, who was quite popular in his day uh, and had a sense of what government is and isn't supposed to do and really what the spirit of America is all about. And it's, uh, I would say, connected to the idea that uh, perhaps all of you watching this should be telling all of your friends, hey, you want to get out of this thing? Well, maybe we have to vote for Republicans right now. No government ever voluntarily reduces itself in size. So government programs once launched never disappear. Actually, a government bureau is the nearest thing to eternal life we'll ever see on this earth. He almost single-handedly resurrected and redefined the modern conservative movement. But he did much more than that. He resurrected and redefined America, known by friend and foe alike as the great communicator. Even Democrats conceded that no one could connect with the American people like Reagan. Whenever he went on TV, which was often, to promote a policy, he invariably swung the American people his way. When he explained something, it just made sense. I like that end part when he explains something, it just makes sense. Does that remind you of anybody, maybe a guy here in Florida who's just saying the basic truth, trying to get the government off your back, caring about freedom and letting people live as they see fit, uh, or as Joy Reid puts it, you know, the fascist in charge or something like that. I mean, these people are nuts, but that's all we have to get back to guys. Like it isn't like this huge swing. We have to end the woke thing and then just get back to an America that was say about 20 years ago. And then there, you know, there were a few things that we still had to fix and we've pretty much done it. Um, I think we can do it. I really do think we can do it. So even though I showed you a lot of nonsensical Democrat stuff today, you, you should be feeling good about the trend right now. You should be feeling good about the trend because it is trending in our direction. And that means you got to vote. You got to encourage other people to vote. If you have friends on the fence, you got to try to explain this stuff to them properly. You got to drag your beaten up old Republican friend in New York who's depressed about everything and doesn't believe anything can change, you gotta get them out there to vote. If you're here in Florida, even though DeSantis is, is probably gonna win this thing by 10 points, like let's get him to win by 15 points. Like just, there should be a message sent to these people, no more of your nonsense. And then as I keep saying, we will look in that rear view mirror and say, AOC hey, you later, that will be it, that will be it for these people. Guys, it's me Monday over at the rubenreport.locals.com community. Here's the one that I put up this morning. I like this one. Uh, moms before asking what their kids are reading in school. That's of course from Greece. And moms after finding out what's in their kids' school library, obviously from Terminator and plenty of other people are putting some funny stuff up in there. You can join us at rubenreport.locals.com. We got a cold close for you in just a moment. Just a couple comments real quick. Uh, EK says, New York is pretty corrupt, but I really hope Zeldin can take it. Look, if we are to believe that any of these systems work, then if enough people have just been fed up, like really imagine what it'd be like if New York, by the way, New York had, you know, we think of New York as this blue stalwart, eternally blue state. Uh, New York had George Pataki, who, I, who was at least two terms. 
Um, so, and that wasn't that long ago, right? That was, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. So it is possible. It really is possible. But imagine if, if New York goes red and then freaking Whitmer is out in Michigan, Whitmer, who has just been one of the worst of the worst, and then they will just throw Biden up to be that lame duck and we can just move on. Like it's possible guys. Amy says, I like that Democrat defense on the inflation topic is that globally we're all screwed. Oh good, I feel so much better. I, I should have mentioned that earlier, right? Cause that's their new thing is like, no, 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 no. It's not us that are just us that are screwed. It's everybody. So please vote for us. It still makes no sense on its own, right? Like it just on its own, on its face, it makes no sense. Uh, and Talway says, Nancy is looking more like Freddy these days. I assume you mean Freddy Krueger. Yeah, she's got a little Freddy Krueger thing, but I'm thinking it's more of a Michael Jackson thing. You know, like Michael Jackson in the later years, puffy shirt, face pulled back. And, and remember, when it comes to Michael Jackson, only when people doubt America, only in America could a young black boy grow up to be an old white woman, the Michael Jackson story. If you're not subscribed, uh, rumble.com slash Ruben Report. Play along in live chat and get early access and ad free stuff and all that at rubenreport.locals.com. My full interview with uh, Miami Mayor Francis Suarez is up right now. And we leave you on this Monday with the elderly man pretending to be president. And quick reminder that I will be at the Florida gubernatorial debate tonight. So I'm gonna to try to do some live streaming from there if possible. If not, I'll take some videos and we'll, uh, we'll make them part of the show tomorrow. Have a great Monday, everybody. This ain't your father's Republican Party. Not, not a joke. This is not your father's Republican Party. This is not your father's Republican Party. This is a different deal. They are not, they are not who we are. They're not who America is. Because this is not your father's Republican Party. This, I call them the new Republican Party. This is not your father's Republican Party. I remember working with Republicans, Republicans. And by the way, this ain't your father's Republican Party. This is not your father's Republican Party. This is a different group of folks, ladies and gentlemen. Not every Republican is a MAGA Republican. Not every Republican embraces that extreme ideology. And not all Republicans, but the radical right in the Republican Party.